Hello, and welcome to Enzo's Theater of the World. I'm your host, Enzo Kunanen. And I'm Ethan. And today we're going to be talking about George Salmanazar. So, today is the last episode of this season, and I'm so sorry for an episode which is going to be full of so many S's. I am still struggling a bit because I did get my wisdom teeth removed last week right after the Catherine Parr episode, uh, but fortunately, I'm going to be fully healed by the time the next episode comes out because this is the last episode of this season. Uh, there's a lot of episodes topics I want to cover in the next season, which I haven't decided on yet, but at the same time, there's a lot we had, we couldn't cover this season, so I definitely am excited to, uh, excited to, uh, talk about them next, uh, next, next time, uh, which would be, I guess the next time I'm free from Oxford, which would be, because I'm going away to Oxford next week, so that's, uh, next, in December, yeah, so the topic today is George Salmanazar, a 1700s imposter who claimed he was from Taiwan, otherwise otherwise known as Formosa, even though he most certainly was not. Uh, so we do have one illustration of him, so I'm going to show it to Ethan. What do you see here? Uh, pretty white dude, like fr- kind of French philosopher, and he's got that like Voltaire haircut. Yeah, and this man... Um, you you can't see him, but he was described by contemporaries as being blonde, speaking with a vaguely French accent, and uh, he managed to convince everyone he was from Taiwan, uh, which, okay. So, how did he do this? So, I feel like I need to give you a bit of his life story first. So, we only know his life story from his autobiography, where, intriguingly enough, he doesn't actually say what his real name was, so even... George Salmanazar is a pseudonym he adopted, so this is very much a, uh, he's keeping this wall of secrecy up, and since no one else who knew him came forward, I guess he'll always remain somewhat mysterious. He was born sometime in the early 1680s, somewhere in southern France, no one knows for sure, he was born to a Catholic family, he was very intelligent as a child, he became fluent in Latin, his dad lived in Germany 500 miles away from his mom for some reason, so... He, he, he was raised by, like, a single mom, essentially. He uh, was actually invited to become a priest because the priest said the Jesuit school where he was being taught really liked him but his, and his aptitude for learning, but his mom wouldn't let, let them. Um, he studied in Avignon, tried being a tutor. It didn't work out for him. And he decided that... And he actually, he actually claimed Latin-wise that he was fluent at the age of, like, seven... Uh, but he stopped his education around 16, and he tried being a tutor and stuff, but eventually fell into poverty, and that's when he decided he wanted to go home. And since his home was on the route that the pilgrims took to Rome, he decided, why don't I just... Why don't I just skip out on this whole honest traveling thing and make a living being essentially a, a liar? So he lied, claiming, oh, I'm an... Irish pilgrim on my way to Rome, he stole some, a pilgrim's cloak and staff from a church and then uh, forged a passport and learned English and set off. But unfortunately, too many people he met were familiar with Ireland because it was, like, Catholic and stuff. So, you know, he couldn't get away with it because he actually didn't know anything about the country. Yeah, which is probably where uh, this whole Formosa idea began because, I mean... They can't tell you if you're lying or not if you they don't know the country you're from. Yeah, so after stopping by to visit his dad, he, he in Germany, so that was a bit of a detour, he found that the Latin in southern France that he learned was a bit hard for a German Latin speaker to understand, so he decided, hmm, maybe I should pretend to be someone from a bit farther away. So then he pretended to be Japanese, because the Jesuits who had taught him told him about Japan and about how the emperor persecuted Christians there, and so he invented his own fake elf writing system, his own fake language to go along with it, and he, and, and he's, and he, like, started wandering around Western Europe, like France and stuff, and he invented weird customs for himself, like eating raw meat and sleeping upright in a chair, and no one had actually seen a Japanese person, so ev- so everyone, uh, 
so, so, so you know, every so so everyone kind of believed him. Although, although he didn't, it didn't bring him the success he wanted. He did try to enlist in the Dutch army, but he was uh, sent instead to a coffee house to gain tourism to to like promote to promote it. I guess as this sort of weird foreigner, but it didn't quite work. Literal influencer. Oops. Yeah, it was in one of sometime in his travels in Germany he took on the name of Salmanazar, inspired by the biblical king Assyrian king Shalmaneser, who uh, deported the people of the northern kingdom of Israel, the lost tribes of Israel, quote unquote. And he even invented his own religion. And he and eventually he wound up in a mercenary army where he met an Anglican priest known as Alexander Inns. By this time, George had uh, transferred his homeland from Japan to Formosa in Taiwan, and he had developed his own foreign calendar and worshipped the, the sun and moon, and he and he had fully uh, sort of acclimatized himself to his invented language. And, and Inns quickly figured out that he was a fraud. In fact, you know, he... Uh, he he did like him, but he knew he was a, fr- a fraud. He asked him some questions, and it was it was quick and like about the country, and it was quickly apparent. And so it also probably didn't help that he was still visibly French and white. Uh, okay, that's less of a problem than you think, actually. So he uh, decided. Sh- so he he was like, "Hey, you want to stop being a soldier and go back to London with me?" And he's like, "Yeah, sure. I don't like being a soldier." And so Alexander quickly converted. George to Anglicanism, and he, and the general, the commanding officer of the regiment, George Lauder, uh, stood as godfather, which is why George Salmanazar was named that, because George, he took the name of the commanding officer, and an official invitation from the Bishop of London soon arrived, who had heard about this strange foreign convert to Anglicanism, and they set off, uh, he, he uh so they went to london and he had this whole like life story made up so he claimed to have been kidnapped to have be, be a noble from formosa but he was kidnapped at a, at a young age by jesuits and brought back to avignon where they attempted to convert him to catholicism uh then but that he was thrown into prison after resisting them but then he escaped and then he went over to cologne and was shipped over to another batch of scheming catholics but he got away again and the dutch soldiers detained him and tried to push calvinism on him but then in the netherlands he finally met alexander innes who dazzled him with the church of england's teachings yeah you can kind of see why bonds of people were swept up without thinking too hard about his identity it's uh really easy when he's a great skate when he's great anti-catholic propaganda to be used yeah so he yeah this yeah because yeah there's a lot of anti-jesuit anti-catholic feeling at this point i guess Uh, this maybe is why they ignored the fact he was visibly white people soon became very interested in him and other and many people in london society began to flock around him and he primarily because he had declared himself to be a reformed heathen. He he used to practice barbarous customs. He still did some foreign mm-hmm. customs, but now he practiced Anglicanism. He was a good Christian. And in 1704, he published a book um, about his life, not about his life, but his life story, but more so about his homeland called, and this is a very long title, so I'm going to read it in full because it really has everything in it. An historical and geographical description of Formosa, an island subject to the Emperor of Japan, giving an account of the religion, customs, manners, etc. of the inhabitants, together with the relation of what happened to the author in his travels, particularly his conferences with the Jesuits and others in several parts of Europe, also the history and reasons of his conversion to Christianity, with his objections against it in defense of paganism and their answers, to which is prefixed a preface in vindication of himself from the reflections of a Jesuit lately come from China with an account of what passed between them by George Salmanazar, a native of the Sedai. Island, now in London, illustrated with several cuts. A cut is a... Uh, yeah, like an illustration, like woodcuts. Woodcut print. Yeah. Oh, so, and also, fun fact, the reason why it's an history and not a... It's, yeah. Not a, back then, it used to be historian, the H is yeah. silent. Yeah. Now so, it's not, but... So I feel like the majority of this episode should be dedicated mostly to this book and diving deep into it, because it is actually really insane. 
uh, just how much world building he put into this. And he, like, I remember reading somewhere he could have been a good fan. Like someone said, he could have been a good fantasy writer. And I do agree with that simply because this is, this was not the done thing back then. You didn't, the majority of the re- the reason why so many people believed in him, especially because he didn't look anything, well, primarily race was still coming into being as like a con- modern ideas of race were still coming into being as a concept. So although there was definitely a distinction between like black people and white people, Asians were kind of weird because Chinese people and Japanese people are definitely pale. And so you can't be like, Oh, you, you don't have the same skin co- because like even benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And you can say, sure. They have like narrower eyes, but maybe not. They believe like in that. a lot of crazy things. So they're like, yeah, guy looks kind of like us. But first, um, for all of his uh, world building, I just want to check the alphabet for a second. How We're going to talk about it later. Yeah. Is that he, 26? That is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. Okay, so it, it was, it looks like in the book. His like, alphabet has 20 letters. Yeah, because I was going to say, because it said earlier in the article something about 26 letters, if he legit just swapped out the latin alphabet characters that would be so lazy so he had this really great habit of a really clever habit of answering any objections made to him any at all with like a variant of oh you're lying or you know oh no or no one can possible or or, no you're wrong because the authors disagree for instance at a meeting of the royal society uh, which w- was, among other things, discussing uh, the pseudo penises of possums and uh, f- human f- and human f- and a human foot found in, uh, and really in, all of the in, stuff Indian that, Ocean driftwood. You know, all of the stuff that rich academics back then would talk about literally nothing of importance and an air- well, there was an air pump capable of creating a vacuum, which that, that sounds significantly more interesting interesting and important than everything else brought up one of the, the the resident astronomer of the royal society when george visited uh because at this point he was getting really prominent he was even invited to christ church to oxford college at oxford for three months to teach for Mohsen to the missionaries there uh but edmund halley known for naming halley's comet did question some on their detailed questions about how long twilight lasted on the island, the amount of time the sun shone down chimneys, and other quantifiable queries. Despite the fact that I could not tell you the answer to this, even if, if like, even though I have lived in Florida for like yeah. sixteen H- years, is being a bit of a nerd. So no is, one knows this. So Manazar, measure. So Manazar confidently s- said that. That the that the sun didn't really shine down chimneys, and he, even though by all standards it was at the equator, so it should have based on astronomy stuff. But then he realized it was a trick, so he's like, ah, no. But you see, the Formosan chimneys are bent. When someone asked why he was so pale, he's like, oh, well, that's because all the Formosan nobles like me spend our time living underground in giant igloo houses. Even if. I would have just said, I'm rich, I spend my day inside. Like, that's more reasonable, right? Some people were like, oh, there was even a Jesuit who, who there was even a Jesuit named Father Fontenay who, 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 <laughs> who came armed with facts. Like, it's like, like, look. Like, Formosa oh, is a province of China, not Japan. And he's like, no, you're wrong. The Chinese were defeated during the war to conquer Ty- Formosa, but then the and Japanese really conquered can't it. can't do anything, because what are you going to ta- say that this guy who claims to be from this country is And then wrong? Salmanazar was like, oh, does any, do you know, Father, do you know of any other ways people refer to Formosa? And he's like, Fontenay said, Taiwan. And, if, and, and. Salmanazar said, "Ah, no, that's a different island. Twelve miles, uh, acro- twelve miles from Formosa, which is also colonized by the Dutch." In and fact, you know, back then people got a lot of information wrong. Like, didn't Marco Polo think that there is like two different Chinas, even though it was no, two he words no, the same name. No, he correctly specified that the northern part was Cathay, Cathay and the southern part was Manzi. It was yeah, other people else. who later. 
took yeah. him to meet it to mean oh cafe yeah, is they, somewhere north of china misunderstood a lot of different things mentioned in history for what it's worth by the si- by 1704 when this was published people did know that marco polo visited china and that china was not anymore ruled by the mongols but it took them a long time to get there so i don't blame him for maybe not being up to date yeah so <laughs> Salmanazar wrote in the dedicatory letter, The Europeans have such obscure and various notions of Japan, and especially of our island Formosa, that they can believe nothing for truth that has been said of it. But the prevailing reason for this, my undertaking, was because the Jesuits, I found, had imposed so many stories and such gross fallacies upon the public that they might better excuse themselves from those base actions which deservedly brought upon them that fierce persecution in China. In J- Japan. I thought it therefore would not be unacceptable if I published a short description of the island Formosa and told the relations why this wicked society and at last all that professed Christianity were with them expelled from that country. Yeah, it's literally just I don't like Catholics. Yeah, he also has a preface uh, in the second edition where he like re- where he talks about where he just rebuts every where he just rebuts. Ev- everything and like all all his critics quote unquote and he and he has like a uh and he has like an account of his meeting with father fontenay and 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 he and he and he says and and he he was like huh that's weird that you're eating like raw flesh for instance because the chinese put dress their meat just like the europeans and they put like spices on it and then he's like okay yeah the 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 tartars are different because they only warm their flesh before they eat it they don't put spices on it but still it's kind of weird that because you're like nearer china but salman is always like aha see you you've you've confessed that not everyone in the east does things the same way oh, i would have just said oh it's not a tradition i'm just weird yeah, and he... Also, I find... I wonder if anyone just asked him on the spot to recite, like, I don't know, like a folk song from Formosa. I feel like that'd be an easy way to get him on the rope. Some of there weren't really many... Creative. Some of these objections weren't very good. Like, oh, you were just 19 when you left Formosa? How should you be... Is it not strange that he should so early be acquainted with the customs and manners of his society? First of all, I don't believe anyone said it because it's such a stupid question. I think he's just making up stuff to put in here to make his critics seem ridiculous. Yeah, because he's like, oh, of course a 19-year-old gentleman like me who of noble birth can give an account of the customs and manners of his country. Yeah, which no one would question considering there have been quite young kings in Europe, so... He is a, however, there were some other serious ones. For instance, he tells us that he was learning Greek when his father took the Catholic priest Derode into his house, and that the Greek books were then thrown aside but, because he could at any time learn that language of their priests. But we are at a loss to know how the Japanese or Formosans came to be to to know of such matters of Greek. What was his Isn't cunning? That masters, that's, uh... such masters of Greek. What was his cunning response? Uh, it is probable that the I cannot. You may ask, you may as well ask me how Formosa first came first to be inhabited, and because I cannot tell you, conclude there is not a man on the island yet. It is probable that the Romish missionaries first brought Greek among us, because we do not in our ancient writings find any of it. But the books and our of our modern priests and philosophers are garnished with Greek sentences and quotations, which still stretches credulity, in my opinion, and doesn't really like answer the question of how did you get it. And what at which point he's like, I don't know, but that doesn't mean that it, it's not real, which. Isn't exactly. Just, I mean, he kind of did answer, though, right? The missionaries brought them. Yeah, but he's like, oh, I don't know, but which I guess could create more verisimilitude because he's like, oh, I don't know, but it's probable. So he it, it makes it sound like, oh, see, I, if I was faking it, wouldn't I know all the answers? Yeah, except- which is an ingenious, clever defense. Oh, I feel like there's not really much to question on that. Yeah, I mean, how else are they going to be brought over? Yeah, no, he, yeah, he can't exactly. Just say you're wrong. Yeah, so there's there's stuff like doth does this for account of Formo there's of course the central objections like does this account of Formosa differ not not differ from all others? And does this not render it false or 
to speak favorably, not much to be depended upon. He says that Formosa is 200 leagues equidistant distant from Japan. Others said it is 140, 150, or 160. He tells us it's about 60 leagues distant from China. Others assured it's but 14, some say 20, some say 30 or 35. And then he said, these people who contradict me differ among themselves, and methinks that should render their accounts it's, at least as suspicious as mine. Now, you should note the fact that they are, he, uh, these objects, I mean, again, he's writing this. Yeah, I don't... Like, I don't think that the the main critique is that you're incorrect on distances. I think it's more the fact that you don't have a single custom in common with the rest of the He accounts. also says, I was not skilled in longitudes and latitudes when I left Formosa. Neither will I be positive that my account of his distance from Japan, etc. is exactly true. Like I may be something he's mistaken. Picking, he's making the worst... Ar- this is literally just him fighting straw men. No, but he's also like... in all. Well, well, how many, if I asked 10 Englishmen how many miles to France, some would say more, some would say less. Again, that's not what people are critiquing in your book. Or, his historical description of Formosa differs yet more from what all others have told us than is geographical. Surely then that must be false, it has so many witnesses against it. Uh, well, uh, the, those okay, established accounts aren't aren't legit either because they say we have no governor and we have no laws. We are mere strangers to letters. Why then should I be a fool to <laughs> invent an alphabet and language and purposefully to lessen my own credit? Do but consider, though you are too jealous and the source, <laughs> how easily you may be imposed upon. For had a Portuguese... This literally sounds like, like a twit longer... For had a Portuguese or a Spaniard or any swarthy complexion man, as you suppose a Formosan to be, who had read the authors that treated my country come into England before me and had told a story agreeable to what had been false fully published, you would certainly have uh, believed him to be what he pretended, and you scruple to credit me, a native of the place, and who have told you nothing but truth. Okay, but he is kind of spinning here. Not in that he's right, because he's wrong, but people did seem to not really care much for native accounts of places. Yeah, he also, yeah, also, yeah, there were, he, they, yeah, he also was, like, uh, oh. Uh, also, I love the jealous and censorious line. <laughs> Though He's you so are too jealous <laughs> and censorious. I'm just imagining him getting, like, so riled up and angrily writing on his manuscripts and, and, and any- like, sound, like, reading it in a mocking tone while he does it. Like, I'm imagining him writing down the objections in a mocking voice, like, Ooh, how came it to be discovered? Well. <laughs> no, well, no, for instance, like, he, for, for instance, like, he would, he, people would be like, oh, what, like, oh, wh- why did the Jesuits say this stuff about, why do some people who aren't Jesuits say this stuff about Formosa then? That's so different. And he's like, well, they did come to Formosa, but they only came to the coast parts. We live, in, the real Formosans live in the coast, in the inland parts okay, where they on. didn't go. For, Taiwan is not that large. In all fairness, they hadn't penetrated into the hill parts yet, but okay, this was hardly a come thing. Come on. There were some other serious ones. For instance, he claimed that he claimed, he gave this whole fake history of Formosa, where he claimed that there, where he, for example, treated of a man named Mariandanu, who, who had who was a Chinese man who had schemed and murdered his way to the throne of Japan, and then become become became emperor, and then conquered Formosa and made it a Japanese now colony. Now you may note that Mariandanu is not a Chinese Mariandu. name in the slightest. He also murdered Emperor Chazajin of Japan, which is not another... I... This is what I don't get. If you're go Like, this goes beyond making there were plenty stuff of about Formosa. You're trying to, like, claim that these are real Chinese and Japanese people. Would you kill... Would it kill you to get accurate names? No, but some people were like, how came it to be discovered that Mariandinu murdered the emperor since nobody knew it but himself? And the answer was, of course, uh, he... There was a plague, and then he confessed, uh... He confessed that he had made a jest of all religion, and that he confessed himself to be the murderer. And now he says he, I am not, I acknowledge, worthy to live. For he, so he drank a coffee dish full of poison and died in the presence That's of not, all. It's such like a weird response to that. I would have just said they won't admit it publicly, but it's a an open secret, right? But, like, like why why would you go this ridiculous plague story? Yeah, he also claimed, for instance, that uh. 
Well, I'll just read from the Wikipedia article. Formosa was a prosperous country, he claimed, with a capital called Externetza. Men walked naked except for a gold or silver plate to cover their genitals. Their main food was a serpent that they hunted with branches. Formosans were polygamous and husbands had a right to eat their wives for polygamy. What? For infidelity. They executed murderers by hanging them upside down and shooting them full of arrows. Every year they sacrificed the hearts of 18,000 young boys to the gods and the priests saved the bodies. And he says, well... Is it possible? And he answers his critics who his, wonder his how it's possible. jealous, who, unsuccessful, loser, balding critics. Who I answer might how, add. It, how, how it is possible that they can sacrifice 18,000 kids a year by saying, well, there's biblical precedent, so clearly it's not unheard of among humanity. Yeah, except you live on an island nation. Yeah, and he also. Is, but. Yeah, yeah. He, and he says, if the foremost. And. and other people were like, if the Formosans had any such barbarous custom, surely Canididius, the Jesuit priest who had been there, should have told us about this. Yeah, if he's trying to slander you, I would report yeah, on that. Yeah, and he's like, um, actually, it's a forgery. But also, he says some weird stuff where, he, where, yeah, but he also says stuff about, like, abortions and how Taiwanese women are forced to abort if they're under a certain age or whatever, which is I, so... I don't... What's he? I, I'm trying to read this. I'm looking at the manuscript. I think he's entirely avoiding the question. Yeah, and he says that the eighteen thousand. Uh, <laughs> he says oh. that the eighteen thousand thing is because we allow polygamy, and that supplies us with a numerous issue. Suppose then that eighty males and eighty females born in one spirit, and grant that sixty of the males are sacrificed. There will be yet left twenty males for eighty females. So There's I just no assume these average women. just like. Pumping children at 24 7, nine months, uh, have another baby, ha nine months, having it like on repeat, no stopping. Yeah. Gotta get those baby numbers up. Yeah, he, and he's like, uh, if gold is so cheap, as he says, why do not merchants bring larger quantities from this? And he's like, I was not of the Emperor's Council, and therefore will not pretend to tell their reasons why he suffers not the merchants to export more gold. Some of our palaces are covered with gold, and therefore must be plentiful. Okay, that's not really great. That's he just says, "Hey, I don't know." <laughs> Asked our emperor. <laughs> Does not the doth not the sun shine? Yes. Yeah, so, so it's so, so it's so funny. So anyway, let's get into the actual book. As you've seen, he spent like a like a full preface just complaining about his loser haters. Who are being so skeptical and unfair and balding and old and boomer. For, Formosa was a he heavily persecuted Christianity, but there were many other religions which were tolerated, including atheism, idol worship, and a sun and star religion worship. And the main religion, though, of course, was the all-powerful god when worthy sacrifice 18,000 kids a year. And the prophet of that god was named Salmanazar. Ah, you see, this is where he supposedly gets the name from. Uh... He also claims that the he also claims that there were two philosophers of this religion, Zero Boabel, who is totally not Zerubbabel of the Bible, and Chorche Machin, and they built a gigantic priest for a high priest named Notoy Bonzo. <laughs> and yeah, no, that's that's this is so funny. He also claimed to have a letter reproduction of a letter addressed to the Formosan king written by the emperor of Japan, although no one quite questioned how he got it. Uh he interestingly enough, his description of Formosan religion said it offered no guidance as to what happened after death. Their holy book, the Jar Habadion, simply promised great happiness after death, but uh every but apparently no one could agree on what happened afterwards aside from he claimed that the men and women constantly smoked opium, they had wooden hourglasses, and the and men wore their hair short, and married women wore masks out in public, and <laughs> yeah, he also claimed that, can you describe what you see here in this illustration of I a Formosan like funeral? A, let's, let's zoom in a little. It's like a procession, right? Okay, so first things first, there are elephants in the procession. Some people uh, are sitting on them. And then you got covered. some robe people, you know, following around. I I assume that this is the casket and they're bringing him to the grave. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just a big old conga line of, <laughs> like, robed people and elephants. Two elephants in the back. He even was able to create his own, like, different currency. He claimed that there was, like, things like the Rochmo and the Copan and the Tylo, which had a sword on it and... The Colan, which had a cow on and the sun and like moon on ask, it. Um, uh, why didn't you bring any with you? 
That is a good point. I don't. I can't. I can't possibly figure out. Surely why. wouldn't be too hard to at least get like someone to forge some fake coins for you or learn how to do it yourself. Yeah. So there is a lovely. Uh, there is a very <laughs> funny part of this book which I want to read simply because it's absolutely insane. Uh, it's about the. It's about the religious ceremonies of the Formosans. Uh, when. When prayers are made for the sanctification of the sacrifices, then everyone bends the left knee and stretches out his arms wide open. But when the victims are slaying, everyone may sit upon the ground, for they have no seats or pews, as you use here in England. Only the richer sort of a cushioned seat on, well, sit on. While the flesh is a-boiling, everyone stands with his hands joined together, looking towards the upper part of the tabernacle. After the flesh is boiled, every one of the people takes a piece of the flesh from the priests and eats it, and what remains the priests keep for themselves. It's a sort of matter of... The idea that somehow a cushion is too expensive for most people to have. I do love Because the... I thought it was just going to be, like, a custom, but no, the rich people have cushions. Why can't they get, like, a burlap sack? I do love the matter of... I do love the matter of fact tone he has in this, because he's just so... You're heading so much into this. For instance, the language of... And he, like, narrates it in such a matter-of-fact way, you... If you if you've never seen an Asian person in your life, you will be convinced. Especially with like chapter thirty, the language of the to, Formosans. It seems to be like a fairly good fake linguist, and it kind of makes you wonder. Like it, it stands in contrast to everything so ridiculous, and then you just have this fairly oh, no. realistic description. The of language, language of Formosa, he says, is the same with that of Japan, but with this difference that the Japanese do not pronounce some letters gutturally as the Formosans do. And they pronounce the auxiliary verbs without that elevation and depression of the voice which is used in Formosa. Thus, for instance, the Formosans pronounce the present tense without any elevation or falling of the voices, jer, chato, ego, amo, and the preter perfect we pronounce by raising the voice, and the future tense by falling it, but the preter imperfect, the plus quam perfectum, and the paolo post futuro yeah, we that, pronounce by this adding is that the, Jesuit education kicking And it in. goes on and on. On and he and it's he's like, like yes yes I believe you man please. and he includes a, a the alphabet which has twenty letters um um ani wait hold on. I can't I can't read that I'm sorry uh, let me I can read it no let me let me ah uh, uh, um mem yeah um mem nen taf lambdo samdo vomera bagdo hamno pedlo kafi omda it, Ilda, Zatara, Dom, Zamfi, Epsi, Fanda, Ra, and Gomera. And he has, like, the figures of them, too. So, like, the... It's it's hard... To, it's like glyphs, which he made up. He also included some words for us. So, the emperor is called in that lang- in his language, Bag- ba- Bagbathan Chevaral, the most high monarch. Or, tl- a man is Banaho. A woman is Bajane, a son is Bot, a daughter Boti, a father Pornio, ha, a mother Pornin, a brother Pornio G- is the porn parody of Mario, a sister Javrain, and yeah, so so he even includes a translation of the Lord's Prayer into Formosan. Ami Pornio Danchin Ornio Viei Nai Jorge Philori. A fodere ba- fi bagalin. I am not reading all of that, but like, good on him. For- he and the Apostles' Creed and the Ten Commandments because this man is doing too much at this point, apparently. Uh, I feel somehow like he really just wanted to make a fake language and he's like, oh, I have to write the rest of this stupid book. Oh, fine. We have like a million billion lines and uh, uh, chameleons. We put, we put gold plates on our dicks. <laughs> <laughs> And though uh, eat a, like a trillion thousand babies each. <laughs> oh no! When the Can victims I get back are... to writing on my new language. When the victims are slain, we put our hands up in the air. <laughs> and extanter, extanter is our is our cat. Can I go back to writing about the language? I really like the language. Let's go back to that. Yeah, the laws of the language are bur- are very harsh. For instance, adulterers for the first offense. Pay a fine of a hundred kopans, which are a pa- pieces of gold weighing a pound. The Ow. second time, he they shall be beheaded. Well, how how are you supposed how gold weighing a pound, and that's your currency? Christians are burned alive. So are blasphemers. If a son and daughter strikes their mother, they shall be thrown into the river. <laughs> uh, you know, if I was um him, I probably would have made my currency easier to replicate. Yeah, he claimed... Like a pound of gold, really? 
Yeah, so... Really hard if you need to make a model. So, finally, I just wanted to show you a, uh... Not finally, but, like, as we... We do have to... Mm, just it's it's a picture of like one of the devils of Formosa. So can you please describe what you see here? Uh, it's like a lion face, and then that's surrounded by a bunch of screaming uh, faces, and then like a warthog that's also screaming, and then another lion screaming face, and then like a four-faced man with four arms with you know different stuff and snakes. Uh, snakes and arrows, and it just feels like all of the. Just think of the image of, like, evil god and just mash every result you get into one thing. It's like, yeah, close enough. Yeah, he... Yeah, so... The... There are some customs. For instance, the kings are saluted by bending the knee, joining their hands, and bowing their head. Uh, and... The poor are not suffered to beg, but every precinct has some public house where they keep all their poor. Who wear who are fed and clothed at the charge of the whole precinct. Uh, he also says that the animals there, there are lions, boars, wolves, leopards, apes, tigers, crocodiles, elephants, rhinos, camels, seahorses, all of which are very tame and very useful. Okay, that's... He also claims that there's no dragons or land unicorns, only a fish with one horn. And there's no griffins either, which are fictions of the brain rather than real creatures, which is horribly ironic considering everything else he said. Yeah. So, what happened to Salmanazar? Well, eventually people, uh, but, but... A few years, by a few years later, so by 1710 or 1711-ish, people had c kind of grown tired of him. There was an April Fool's joke sent in of in this early newspaper called The Spectator by Joseph Addison and Richard Steele, where they wrote, On the 1st of April will be performed at the Playhouse in Haymarket, op an opera called The Cruelty of Atreus, Nota Bene. The scene where Thyestes eats his own children is to be performed by the famous Mr. Salmanazar, lately arrived from Formosa. The whole supper being set to kettle drums. How did they, like, eventually realize he was a fake? I don't think they, I don't think they realized so much. Did they well, just think he was, like, a stupid foreigner? They, they, they grew tired of the fad. Also, he it's... developed an opium addiction and and tried to, and, and according to Wikipedia, engaged in a failed attempt to market decorated fans purported to be from Formosa. So maybe that kind yeah, of... Yeah, I think everyone was just tired. You know, this is, again, like, it's like trying to monetize your meme page. Yeah, he... Fortunate... People get tired. Fortunately, you know, he, he also did start confessing to people at this point, like, oh, yeah, I'm a fraud. And in the following years, he worked as a clerk, he, and he, and eventually he settled into becoming a Grub Street writer, which was a writer, which was a very packed and narrow street full of hack writers, who were people who paid, who were paid to write low quality rushed articles for, for books and newspapers to order, so, he, for, and he wrote a lot of stuff, so he, Learned Hebrew, for instance, he co-authored a general history of printing and contributed a number of articles to a book by George Sale called The Universal History, George Sale being another scholar of the period. And the Universal History even included, and it was universal, not like a bunch of the later Victorian histories of the world, which would only include the history of the Western world. No, this included the history of everywhere, including, like, it had, like, Genghis Khan and stuff, it was complete. And it even had a section on... Taiwan, and he was like, and and he was like, oh yeah, I uh, totally lied. About although Taiwan. he wrote himself to in, about it in the third person, so he's Mr. Salmanazar is a fraud, and I'm like, okay, you can't see well, say that. Well, no, I'm not Mr. Salmanazar. I'm uh, that's a that's a different dude. No, he then published. I'm it. just a, I'm just swords and Salmanazar. <laughs> Don't don't pay attention to me. We <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh he he by this point he worked twelve hours a day and he sustained himself to ten to twelve drops of opium mixed with a pint of punch, and in the and and at the end of his life he published memoirs of asterisk 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 asterisk, asterisk commonly known by the name of George Salmanazar, a reputed native of Formosa. He did he. Sadly, there were made many major story holes in his story, in it, his new story, especially for someone so supposedly b much of a born-again Christian. He apparently did not, uh, 
provide any account of the dozen or so years after his arrival in England, because his indiscretions would only disgust the Christian reader. Any thoughts on this reticence? Really, man? Yeah, he... he said, uh, I can't write anything I did when I came to England because I was too much of a nasty freak. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, I did the whole Salmanazar thing. But weirdly <laughs> enough, in his old age, Salmanazar became friends with a young Sa- Doc- Samuel Johnson, often known as Dr. Samuel Johnson, who laid, who wrote a bunch of stuff including his Dictionary of the English Language, which was the preeminent d- dictionary in English up until the arrival of Ox- the Oxford English Dictionary 150 years later, the influence of Samuel Webster notwithstand- of Noah Webster notwithstanding. Uh, but, yeah, he, yes, yeah. Johnson really admired him. He uh, thought of him as sort of an eccentric but saintly figure. And when someone said, when I asked Dr. Johnson who was the best man he had ever known, Salmanazar was the unexpected reply. And he used to go and sit with him at the alehouse in the city, apparently. Really? That's the best man you knew? In old age, Salmanazar lived on an annual pension of 30 pounds paid by an admirer, which was very big back then, I guess. And he died at the age of approximately 84 or maybe 78 or somewhere in between. No one's quite sure, which feels like a lot. Yeah, but again, it's hard to tell when he has no very few details of his early life. Yeah, but he died in May 3, 1763 in obscurity. So that is the story of George Salmanazar. In the end, no one got hurt. Uh, I don't... No, no one got hurt. He did well for himself for a bit. He got faded. in the bag for a little bit before ending I, up in the hack writer house. Uh, I can't say I, I'm i too angry with this man, despite the whole, the whole like... Like, he, some of his illustrations for his book are still, on, like, available to see. Like, you can, like, you can see, like, his sketches. So, like... You know what he was? A, he was a man born before his time. He... Like these are some sketches. Yeah. This is a this is a woman wearing a flower headdress, and this like, is a widow. It's all perfectly good fantasy fiction writing, but well before that had become an actual art form. Yeah. So next time, yeah. So this is it for now. Uh, I'm kind of sad to be leaving this, but also I'm really excited to be going to Doctor. But I'm also really scared because it's like my first time. I, living away from home and it's like it's just far away so yeah um adios and see you whenever next time is so probably in december so i'm gonna be gone for a few months so goodbye bye